Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. I hope you guys are having a great day. So today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I've been doing a lot of canning videos for you and I know you all love them, but I know some of you follow me for other things than canning. So today we're going to do a pantry meal. Now, if you do not have a home canned pantry, please don't leave me. I'm going to tell you how you can do it with things that you can buy at the grocery store. But we are going to be making Swiss steak. Super simple, lots of great flavor, and really easy to do. So um, from our home can pantry, we're going to be using a can or a jar of our delicious home canned French onion soup. This is fantastic for this. Um, the French home can French onion soup has wine in it, it has beef broth, it has delicious onions of course, some garlic, some great seasonings. So this is going to be something really nice to use in, as the sauce, part of the sauce, for our um, Swiss steak. The other thing we're going to use from our home can pantry are, is, is a jar of stewed tomatoes. Now, if you don't have these two items, like I said, I'm going to show you how to substitute. You can saute off fresh onions and garlic, deglaze your pan with a little bit of wine if you want to. You can even skip the deglazing step and just saute fresh onions and garlic and then use beef stock instead of the French onion soup. And you can also use a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes tomatoes from the grocery store if you prefer. So if you don't have these two items, you don't have to use them. For our sides, we're also going to be using a couple of things from our home canned pantry. We're going to be making, turning our herbed potatoes into mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are very traditional, served with Swiss steak. And then we're also going to use, we're going to pop open a jar of delicious green beans. So good. It's a traditional meal, but we're going to use a lot of things from our home can pantry. And like I said, if you're not a canner, don't leave me. You can substitute things that you have either in your freezer. If you like frozen green beans, obviously you can use those. You can use a can of green beans from the grocery store and you can also make traditional mashed potatoes. But if you are a canner, I highly, highly recommend that you get herb potatoes on your list. They're great to have on your shelf and they are a great starter for mashed potatoes. Traditionally, Swiss steak is also made with round steak that you pound out to tenderize it a little bit. Um, some people use sirloin, it's up to you, but I'm gonna be using cubed steak instead. It's already tenderized for you directly from the grocery store, so we can skip that step and it will cook a little bit faster. So whenever I can take a little bit of help from the grocery store, I do. So let's get started with our Swiss steak. Okay, so we're gonna start by preheating our oven to 350 degrees. I'm gonna be using my handy dandy trusty cast iron skillet. If you do not have cast iron, you can always use whatever pan you like, um, but you want a pan that can go from the stovetop to the oven safely. Highly recommend cast iron. If you're not into that, you might wanna give it a try. So we're gonna go ahead and Put in about two tablespoons of good olive oil into the bottom of our pan. If you don't want to use olive oil, you can use whatever you like. And we want to heat that up to a medium, a nice medium high heat. While that is happening, we're going to take about three quarters of a cup of flour, half to three quarters of a cup of flour, and we're going to season it up with some seasoned salt. We're going to put in a couple of teaspoons of seasoned salt and also some black pepper. We wanna give our steak some nice flavor from the get-go. So just, I just stir that all together with a fork. And then you're gonna take your cube steak pieces, we're gonna dredge them in the flour and then we're going to put them in our pan and we're just, we're not gonna cook them through, we just want to get a nice golden crust on both sides. So two to three minutes on each side. Okay, just take your cube steak pieces. I cut my larger ones in half. Some of my cube steak pieces were pretty big, so I did cut the, some of them in half. We're gonna dredge them in the flour and then put them in the oil. So just dredge them in your seasoned flour and then go ahead and put them in your pan. And you just want to cook them 
like I said, till it gets nice color on each side. Okay guys, once you get some nice color, you can see we have some beautiful caramelization going on on our steaks. Once you get some nice color on both sides, you want to remove the steaks from your pan. Okay, once you have your steaks all brown, um, you may find that you need to add more oil as you're browning, and if you need to do that, that's totally fine. So at this point, if you don't have the French onion soup, go ahead and take a sliced, a whole sliced onion, a couple cloves of garlic, garlic chopped up, and you can saute those off at this point in um, some oil in your pan, and then deglaze it. Once you saute them for about three minutes, then you can deglaze your pan with a little bit of wine if you want to. We're gonna skip that step because I have all that in my French onion soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my jar of French onion soup. I'm going to add my jar of stewed tomatoes. You can also use chopped tomatoes if you prefer. And then we're also going to add about a half of an eight ounce, oh, what is this, six ounce can? Yeah, six ounces, about a half of a six ounce can, a couple of tablespoons or so of tomato paste. And then we're gonna give that a nice stir. Scrape up all the yummy bits in the bottom of your pan. I prefer stewed tomatoes. Stewed tomatoes have some other veggies added to them, usually celery, sometimes green pepper. And I just think it really adds a lot of nice flavor to the Swiss steak, but you can use just, like I said, chopped tomatoes if you prefer. Or, I'm sorry, diced tomatoes, canned diced tomatoes if you prefer. And we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. We're also going to add a couple of tablespoons of Worcestershire. I love Liam Perrins, but there are other brands out there. One to two tablespoons. And then we are also going to add, you can add one or two bay leaves. I use the Spice Island bay leaves and they're pretty potent. So I'm only going to add one. looks and smells delicious already. Okay, once your tomato gravy starts to simmer, that's basically what we've made is tomato gravy, you can go ahead and add your steaks back in. All right, once you get your steaks all nestled in there, we're gonna go ahead and cover it and we're gonna transfer our pan to our preheated 350 degree oven and we're gonna let it bake for about an hour until it's fork tender. Hey guys, I have my potatoes warming, I have my green beans warming, and our Salisbury, or not Salisbury, our Swiss steak, that's what I meant to say, our Swiss steak has been cooking for about 45 minutes. So what I like to do now is we're gonna remove the lid and I'm just gonna, kind of stir my sauce. It can get thicken up in certain spots more than others and I like to make sure everything's evenly distributed. Check on my steaks to see that they're getting nice and tender and they are. So I like to just give it a nice little stir, cover everything back up with the sauce. And this time for the last 15, 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna put it back in the oven and we're gonna let it cook, continue to finish cooking with the lid off. I want some evaporation to take place so that my sauce will thicken up some more. You don't have to do this step, but I find that it's nice to get a thicker sauce. So that way you don't, you can always thicken it with a cornstarch slurry if you prefer, but this works out really well. It's part of your cooking time and there's no extra step. So I'm gonna pop him back in the oven for about another 15, 20 minutes and mash my potatoes, season my green beans. And when we come back, we'll be ready to Plate it all up. Okay guys, we are all done. I love doing meals like these that you can pop the main part of it in the oven and it can be doing its thing hands off while you're getting your sides together. So this is a really nice meal for me to do. I enjoy this. And many of you have asked me, those of you who are canners have said with things that, that we've canned together, 
okay, that's great. I have it on my shelf, but now what do I do with it? So really my goal with this meal uh, was to help you come up with ways to use the things that we are canning. And again, if you're not a canner, please don't let it deter you from trying this meal. It's absolutely delicious and you can make the substitutions that I already discussed and I'll make sure to leave the alternate instructions for you in the description box below. So I hope you'll give it a try. And actually I just came up with this on the fly. My husband was saying last week that he was wanting to have Swiss steak for dinner. So it was on my menu, but when I got to looking through my recipe and thinking about how I do it, I thought I'm going to incorporate some of the items from my home can pantry for those of you who are looking for ideas. So really that was my inspiration for doing this. So I want to give you a nice beautiful look at my plate here. How delicious does that look? Those or potatoes you guys if you are a canner and you haven't canned those you are missing out they are so great to have on your shelf and like I said they're a great prep for um, mashed potatoes you do have to cook them a little further I have found because we're using white potatoes that's what's recommended for canning starchy potatoes like russets like we normally use for making mashed potatoes don't can so well I know one of my viewers found a way to kind of get around that. She pre-soaked hers and she said that they turned out fine. I haven't tried russets and that's not necessarily what's recommended. Um, not because it's unsafe to can them, but because they don't can as well as a white potato or a red skin potato or even yellow skin potatoes. So um, anyway, you do have to cook them a little farther, but they have delicious flavor to them infused in them already because we can them up with chicken stock and with delicious herbs. So they are pretty delicious on their own. Just heat them through. Um, drain the chicken stock off and go ahead and mash them up with a little bit of butter and a little bit of milk and they're just fabulous so good and of course home canned green beans I do have a video coming on that I've not done a video on home canning green beans but I'm going to have one for you guys for that because they're so easy to do and that's really a pressure canning basic thing to learn if you're new but enough talk let's try our delicious Swiss steak it's so tender and the gravy has thickened up nicely look at that so good mm. Mm. that you guys is a taste bud explosion that is delicious with the french onion soup there's so much flavor in that home canned French onion soup. It's just fabulous. And it worked out really well for this. So I hope that you will give this meal a try. I appreciate you guys coming along with me today. If you have any comments or questions about my home canned pantry meal, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, guys.